everybody, this is Josh with Homesteading Family, and today I'm going to show you how we save 40% and more on our feed bill for our egg laying hens, for our meat chickens, all of our poultry, and even our pigs, which we grain feed along with other things. And the way we do that is by soaking and fermenting our grains. Now, your grains are made with a protective coating that seals in all the nutrients and helps them to be able to store well. That's why you can store your wheat and your oats long term in a dry, you know, temperature controlled place. That's why they will store in the ground. But that protective coating locks up the nutrients and our bodies actually have to work harder, whether it's our bodies physically or the chickens or whatever you're feeding the grain to, they have to work harder to get that nutrient out and a lot of it passes through. So if we can uh, make it easier and release those nutrients and make them more uh, available, then you're going to be able to lower your feed bill, feeding less because the chickens or the geese or the pigs or whatever you're feeding has uh, more access to that nutrient. By soaking the grains, you soften them up. That's just exactly what happens out in nature. Those seeds are in the ground, the spring comes, it starts to warm up, those seeds get damp and wet, they start to expand, and the nutrient in there begins to soften and release so that that little seed can start to sprout. We're just mimicking that, and we're going a little further by actually fermenting, which adds probiotics, and actually increases and um, you know multiplies vitamin content. And again, by doing that, you are increasing the nutrient availability and you're gonna need less feed. So let me show you how we do this and then we'll talk about how you can um, make this work for your particular situation, okay? So I've gotta kinda of work you backwards because this is a work in process. So what we have to do first is empty the day's grain, which we've drained all the water off. So this bucket has a hole in the bottom and I've poured it from these ones that have been soaking for several days, and this lets all the water out. And usually I would just feed from here, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and dump this into another bucket. Okay, and then we're gonna take the last bucket. We've got three here, we're fermenting for three days. You can do four. If it's really warm, you might be able to get even 24 hours. Uh, or 48 hours. Uh, we're getting three and it's still, we're doing three days and it's still a little cool so our ferment is very light but at least they're getting well soaked and we're starting to warm up so this fermentation will get going even better. So yesterday's we're gonna take it and we're gonna pour it out into a bucket that has a hole in the bottom and that allows the water to drain out and then these grains are ready to be fed and we're just gonna kind of move our buckets over, okay? Now, you could just switch buckets, okay? You could just take your empty one, put it there. I like to dump them because it mixes everything up and makes sure that all the grains are getting exposed. If you're doing something smaller, you could stir it. It does the same thing, but these are a little bit big to stir. Do the same thing with our first bucket, which just got started yesterday. Right now, we've got to add our grain to the first bucket. Right, and now we're gonna add water. So, this is day one, this is day two, this is day three, and then the final bucket has holes in it so that when you pour it into there, the water drains out and it's ready to feed. Again, you might be able to get away with one or two days, at least 24 hours to get them soaking and get the ferment going. Now, before I forget, you don't have to add a starter. If you research this and look up, people will talk about doing starters. You don't have to, but it is helpful. So you can start with any kind of lacto ferment. If you're doing any sauerkraut 
any kind of fermentation, lacto-fermentation at all, you can just add a little bit of that. The other way is just to add water and get going. And what you can do is take some from this bucket here and just add a little bit of that water, okay? That's going to help get this going. Now, the grains have swollen and a lot of times after I've moved the buckets, it needs more water in it. You want to make sure you always keep the water well above the grain. You don't want any molds developing or anything like that, so make sure it's submerged. And, and when you start, depending on the size of your container, um, start with a few inches above the grain, and that grain will swell and absorb the water. And so check it the first couple days, and um, you may see that you've got to add water in the middle of the day. Once you get going, you're going to know how much water to put in there uh, each time, and you're rolling with it, okay? So again, you're soaking the grains. The grains will naturally start to ferment. That soaking is softening the seed and is making those nutrients more available. And then by taking it even further and doing the fermentation, you are adding probiotics and you are adding your, your, you get a growth in there that starts to happen that is multiplying nutrients. That can significantly lower your cost right there, okay? Now, we, in addition to that, you can use whatever grains you're using. Um, yeah, you know, I've read of some people doing this with a mash or pellets. I haven't done that. That seems kind of messy. I don't know how well that would work. Um, so we're using whole grains and cracked grains. They both can work. Uh, I use a scratch to even further lower the cost. And it's a non-GMO. Uh, we don't have organic readily available that is um, either we can afford. Uh, if you can go organic, I would highly recommend that. That's even better. At least try to go with a non-GMO and a quality feed. Again, a quality feed, there's just more nutrient there as well. And we want to get rid of any pesticides, herbicides, any of that anyways. But if you have the ability to move your chickens around or free range them, you can go with a lower quality feed. So instead of a high protein feed, um, if your chickens are free ranging, or you can move them like we have ours back here in the garden right now and they've been eating the seeds, eating the bugs. Now they've kind of worked that garden uh, down pretty good and we can tell the protein is not there. The, um, we're starting to get a few less eggs and we don't want that. So we've either gonna add some protein back in or we're gonna move the chickens out. So again, the, doing the scratch part is an additional using scratch instead of a higher quality protein feed that you would usually use for layers is an additional cost saving, but you have to have a way to get that extra, extra nutrient to the chicken. So they've got to be free ranging or they've got to have a large area where there's vegetation and there's plenty of bugs and there's a couple different ways to manage that like I was explaining. Let's see, um, you know, where to start is, as far as how much do you feed? You, you know, if you read most recommendations on feeding egg laying chickens is a quarter to uh, two thirds of a pound a day of feed. So I'd recommend you start on that lower end about a quarter of a pound and go from there. See how that's working for you and, and you just each environment, each one of your environments is going to be different so you've got to just have a baseline to start at and again depending on what access your chickens have to other feed, how, how they're um, how you're housing them, all those different things are going to affect your feed requirements. So I would start with that uh, quarter pound. If you're using a um, high quality feed, higher protein feed, uh, you're probably going to be able to take that down pretty quickly. Or if you're free ranging them, you'll probably be able to take that down as well. But that is the place to start is that quarter to two thirds of a pound. Let's see. Um, you know, it, it, as far as containers, if you have a few chickens, you're probably going to want a smaller container than this. Uh, we've got chickens, we've got ducks, we've got turkeys, we've got geese, so we're doing quite a bit of feed here. This works real well for us. Now, the other thing that you can do besides going to a smaller container is you can do a large container like this, get to your last bucket, and leave it in the water, and then scoop out what you need. Um, I, I like moving it every day. It just keeps me involved with the process, making sure that I'm changing it out, I'm aerating it, I'm adding water, but people do do that. They'll put a lid on it. Um, you don't want it 
to uh, get yeast in it. You certainly don't want to add yeast and turn it into an alcoholic ferment that will kill your chickens uh, or certainly make them silly. Uh, um, so if you do decide to, to work out of one bucket for multiple days and do a batch of it, just make sure you cover it and you leave everything completely submerged. But again, for our size and what works here, I like just changing it out every day, moving through that, make sure that the process is working good. I'm keeping my eyes on it. And when it starts to ferment, um, you will see that it will start to bubble. And you probably can't see it in here, but even in these already, you can see the little bubbles coming up. And uh, the more that fermentation goes, the more visible that is. And it should smell, some people don't really like the smell, but it should smell pretty sweet. You know, some people describe that as bad. Um, we're all different in our house and what we think about it. Some people think it's kind of yucky. It just reminds me of some of the other fermented products. But if it gets to smelling really bad, moldy, icky, then you've let it sit too long or you're letting grain up on top, there's something wrong. It, it should have a, a, a sweeter fermenting smell, e even if you don't particularly like that smell, okay? It, sh it shouldn't just really get icky. And, um, you know, I think that's about it. If you start doing this, you're going to have uh, lower feed costs. You're going to have healthier chickens. And it's been shown that the fermenting increases the thickness of your egg shells and the weight of the eggs. So you're, you're getting, besides lowering your feed cost, you're getting a healthier animal. You're getting healthier food for yourself. And man, that's just a win-win. So you guys uh, try it out and feel free to come back here and comment, ask me any questions. And um, once you get it going, let us know how it's going, okay? See you soon. For more videos like these, sign up at www.homesteadingfamily.com. Also, follow along on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.